Konnichiwa, I am Jay Beach alongside Christopher Zunk. That plus a short trip down the road to CBUS, where we find a team that traded their franchise player to the New York Rangers, then another one to Philly, one to Nashville for a new franchise player, and then they would move him to Chicago, and they moved another one to Winnipeg for yet another franchise winger that would ride the pine. Uh, they lost a franchise goalie to Florida, another franchise winger to the New York Rangers. Uh, like Columbus, why can nobody love you? Why can nobody stay with you? All of that and more <laughs> as the Lunchroom Syndicate presents their completely factual, not at all subjective list of the Columbus Blue Jackets all-time team. If this is the first time you are joining us for one of these videos, or you just need a refresher on what the hell we are doing, we are going through and deciding the best of the best for the Columbus Blue Jackets, putting together a full lineup that is four left wingers, four right wingers, and four centers, three left-handed shot. How about you give it a shot here? Why don't you tell them what we're doing, Christopher? Oh. Okay. Did you? Did I, I don't know if I screwed that up. You had a look on your face like, what are you doing? And then I just lost where I was at. Ah, uh, yeah. No, I, for some reason, thought there was only three centers. And then I realized I fucked up. I was like, oh, never mind. I'm an idiot. <laughs> well, one of us fucked up. Take two. If you're new or you need a refresher of what we're doing, we are picking the Columbus Blue Jacks all time team, a full team, basically. What do we mean by that? Well, we have four left wingers, four right wingers, four centers, not three like my head said. Three defensemen, both left-handed and right-handed, three each, and two goaltenders. We tear these off into three different colors, depending on the team, usually team colors. Uh, for the Columbus Blue Jacks, we have a white tier, which is the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, on these lists, which is they're, they're good players, but not really all-timers. We'll have red tier, which is pretty good players, definitely in the conversation, but not quite to the elite of the elites. And the blue tier, which is the no-brainers, no doubt, all all timers. That's correct. And how are we deciding who's better than who? Well, be whatever the fuck we feel like, quite frankly. Whatever the fuck we feel like. It's it's really up to us, and that's what makes this factual and not subjective. Exactly. We See, each have our own criteria. Our criteria is made up of. Uh, we, we, we really haven't established a, a set of rules yet. Will we do it? Maybe. Have we done it yet? No. We just go with what feels good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Most of the time we keep our pants on for that. Today's well, one of those for me. <laughs> well, I'm just going to let, I'm just going to let it, uh, I was going to say let hang, but <laughs> I'm just going to let it be a mystery for everyone, whether I'm wearing pants. <laughs> While you're hanging there. <laughs> While I'm hanging. Anyway. Yeah, so the first thing that we do here is we determine who the face of the franchise is. This is an absolute no-brainer here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Number 61, Rick Nash. What's so great about Rick? What isn't great about Rick Nash, quite frankly? 289 goals and 674 games played. Almost a little bit less than a point per game play. He had 547 points. Big body, played body well. Physical player. Uh, just was an absolute star. The first true star of the Columbus Blue Jackets. The biggest name. Uh, the number one overall pick. This is a guy that when we used to tier off lists back in the mid to, two mid to late 2000s, we would put him in the same tier as Crosby and Ovechkin and make very valid points while he was just as good as those two, if that tells you anything. Yeah, we had, we, we thought that highly of him. And then we had to take a step down. We always said, okay, there's people who are at this level and it's Crosby, Ovechkin, Rick Nash, and then it's a step down before you get to guys like Pavel Datsuk. You know, another thing I always liked about him, 
was he was always a class act despite being on some just god awful Columbus Blue Jackets teams and still being able to produce the way he did. And you know, they only made one playoff appearance with him, but it definitely wasn't his fault. Where what position would you like to start off with? Uh, you know, let's start with let's go down the middle. Let's start center. The position in which Columbus has never had a sustained true number one center they have never been able to get anybody and when they do as soon as they start to get them developed they gone but we have another familiar face the lunchroom syndicate love child chris beach that motherfucker from nashville to columbus Still doesn't know how to spell his name, but he did put in substantially more time with Columbus than he did Nashville. He did. I mean, that's... Five goals, four assists, nine points in 16 games. That's a pretty good point per game average for a guy who couldn't play more than 16 games. You know, I'm, I like looking at that. I'm like, why did he play more than 16 games? That's not horrible by any stretch of imagination. No, that point per game average is just as good, if not better, than the rest of the names on here that are all time. Yeah. Poor, poor Chris. If he could just learn how to spell, yeah. he could he could have been a franchise player. It's true. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Who else are we looking at here in Columbus? Uh, all right, outside of Chris Beach, we have Brandon Dubinsky, Pierre Luc Dubois, Sergey Fedorov, Boone Jenner, Ryan Johansson, R.J. Umberger, and Alexander Wenberg. Uh, Brandon Dubinsky played played a little while in Columbus. Uh, four hundred and thirty games, two hundred and seventeen points, uh, four hundred forty eight penalty minutes. Uh, solid player. I mean, uh, when you're talking like normal all-time teams, he's probably not really in the discussion, but for Columbus, he certainly is. Um, like for most teams, he's a white, but maybe for Columbus, he might be bordering on the red. A good player. He deserves to be mentioned Mm -hmm. for the Blue Jackets. He's not an all-time great. He's white here for me. Uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, one of the many... potential franchise guys in Columbus that they get rid of um, that rid of Pierre Luc Dubois to bring in Patrick Laine. Um, so we'll see where he's going to fall on this list later on, but Pierre Luc Dubois uh, start of his career. So don't really have too much time to shine or blossom. Uh, so he's going to stay at a white tier for me here. Uh, next up, Sergei Fedorov. Uh, in terms of AHL, absolute legend, um, all timer, absolute one of the best Russians that ever come through. Um, uh, played a relatively short time at Columbus, 185 games, put up a decent amount of points. And this is at the tail end of his career, so 113 points, 185 games, playing with them basically when they started. But for Columbus purposes, he's white tier, probably. I, I, I struggle with Fedorov because he's an asshole. He's a grade-A asshole, but he was a big name coming to Columbus. I think he really helped to legitimize hockey in Columbus because of how big of a name he was going. Right. So I'd give him a red tier. Okay. Boom Jenner, one of our longest-tenured Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, At 530 games, under half a point per game. That wasn't really his style, though. He's a nice, big, physical piece of man meat. Um, He's still still a white tier, though. Uh, Yeah, I mean, we're talking all time tier. Yeah. um, He kind of epitomizes what Columbus has been the last decade or so. Um, They're a tough team to play against. Yeah, I mean... You don't want to face them in the playoffs if they make it. And they just in general, you know, when especially through the Torrell years, they just were they won one round and you're like, oh, you don't want to face them. Come on. I, I mean, I mean you didn't though, because they beat you up. I mean, I mean they, they were not uh, just because you could beat them doesn't mean you want to face them. I mean, there's yeah. a difference in that. Um 
I mean, but, how many attempts did it take him in the playoffs to win a game? Like three, but. And they kept getting like swept, swept out in five. They finally win a series. Eh. I'd want to face them every year in the playoffs if I could. I mean, one, one of those, one of those and move on. One of those years they had like the fourth most points in the league and had to face like Pittsburgh because of the way the setup is. So I, I can't give them too much shit on that one. But uh, no, but he's a white here. Next up, Ryan Johansson, another one of those guys who fa- franchise potential um, got traded away for another franchise potential guy, Seth Jones. We'll talk about him later. Ryan Johansson. Um, the thing about him is he never really lived up to his potential. Um, I struggle placing him with Columbus, kind of similar to where with with Dubinsky's and the, um, he when he was good, he was good. He's a red tier at that, but it's hard to put him there because he just wasn't always there. Yeah, um, his potential and what they thought that they were going to be getting with him was a blue tier player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he showed sparks of that but he didn't have it sustained no and uh team we just did nashville you can ask them about his potential um so where did you want to go with him i mean blue potential probably it's hard to put him above a white which is where he's at i mean i'd be comfortable with him in the red tier just because he was skilled but it's hard to It'd be a low on the very low end. If, if maybe just make this a little bit easier for us later, he's above everyone else we've done so far. Uh, RJ Umberger, uh, a, a great depth guy to add onto your team. He will make your team better. He will not make your all time team better. Uh, he's a white tier. Uh, Alexander Wenberg, um, everything you just said about RJ Umberger applies to him. Uh, maybe a little bit lesser so, but <laughs> a uh, very different type of player. But yes, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, just a similar. You know, you you'd want my team. I mean, I like Weinberg, but he's just not an all timer. It's hard to put him anything above a white. Okay, um, so we need to take four of these players up. We have two of them red tier. Who's going to be our number one center all time for the Blue Jackets? Ryan Johansson or Sergey Fedorov. <laughs> this is not a good group. I, I think it'd be a bit of a disservice to the franchise. I don't know. Fedorov probably meant more because, like you said, he legitimized hockey in Columbus. And, so Boone, Gen- and Boone Jenner. And Ryan Johansson was a disappointment. He didn't live up to it. So yeah. Fedorov, number one. Yeah, I guess so. Fuck. The same Detroit Sergey Fedorov either. And Ryan Johansson at two. Um, I have a name for three in mind. Um, I mean, you got three guys that are basically the same fucking play. I mean, same in terms of stats. I mean, Dubinsky, Umberger, and Lindberg, all point wise at least, and point wise in games. <coughs> Dubinsky has has. I would take Dubinsky over those two, so he would be in my running. Um, in terms of skill, Pierre Luc Dubois probably should be closer to the top four. And I think Boone Jenner kind of epitomizes what the Blue Jackets are. Um, so that's a, basically that's the three that I'm down to is Boone, P- Pierre, and Duke. Those are my three also. RJ Umberger's behind. Wenberg, I just know too many Blue Jacket fans that do not like Alexander Wenberg, who would disappear for long stretches of time. Yeah. Um, so we have the three. We need two of the selections. Do you have one that you're like, yes, this one has to make it? I think Dubinsky. That was mine. Yeah, I, I think Dubinsky just... Uh, after that... <sighs> I, I <don't> <laughs> Potent- uh, potential or tenure? Uh, I think that's my choice then, Boo Jenner. So our four centers... For the Columbus Blue Jackets are Sergei Fedorov, Ryan Johansson, Brandon Dubinsky, Boone Jenner. Yowza. Well, we're off to a good start, aren't we? Woo wee. <clears throat> okay, what's our next shit? I mean position. Let's go goalie. Goalie. 
I mean, we want our legitimate good ones. Our goalies that we are going to be deciding between today are Sergei Bobrovsky, Mark Denis, Jonas Corpusalo, Steve Mason, and Elvis Merzlikens. This is, compared to what we're going to see and what we've seen so far, this is a pretty solid group. Is it? Comparatively speaking. Well, you're, you're less of a fan of Bobrovsky than I am, so that, that makes a big difference, too. I think he's, uh, well, yeah. let's just start. Bobrovsky, uh, he's, he would be, for me, he won two Vesnas in Columbus. He's, he's, border blue, he's a border blue tier for me. Yeah, I agree that he's blue tier, and I also agree that I wasn't a huge Bobrovsky fan. Um, his numbers are good there. Um, I just, I, I had problems with his consistency. Um, Take a look at the photo there and tell me what you see, though. I see him looking up toward looking for something with the puck right near his skate. Yeah, he's looking back at the blue line with the puck just sliding into his net. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was that was my my thoughts on Bobrovsky. But as you said, the Vesna trophies are there. Then we have Mark Denis. Um, Second longest tenure goalie in Columbus, horrible win percentage, GAA above three. Uh, he's a white tier. Yeah. Next up, Jonas Corposalo, who um, had an absolutely legendary playoff game against the Tampa Bay Lightning the second year, not the, not during the. Although he was part of their big big win along with Bobrovsky against uh, the all-time record-breaking lightning. Jonas, uh, again, similar stats to need, a little bit less games. I like him, but it's hard for me to put him anything above a white. No, he's been a backup the entire time. Yeah, he's been a good one. And he had an 82 save game that I was mentioning. Um, out, of, uh, out of the goaltenders that I like to watch, he's probably at the top of this list for me. Steve Mason, 232 games there. Um, part of me wants to put him at red, but a bigger part of me wants to leave him white. Why is that, Zonk? He's, I, I feel, see, this, see it's oftentimes for me, when you talk about Sergei Bobrovsky, is how I think of Steve Mason, because I thought Bobrovsky was more consistent than you give him credit for. Steve Mason is the epitome of hot and cold. When he was good, he was good. When he was bad, he was legendarily bad. And that's where Steve Mason is. And it's hard to put him above a white tier because of that. Well, I guess I was kind of saying the same thing, but a lot more like exact and more poignantly he's white here because he catches with his right never trust a goalie who catches right oh you know what good point i didn't even catch that yeah either oh. did he you know why because he caught he caught right handed trying it with his right and our last goaltender on this list elvis merzlikens um I have high hopes for the guy who's a white tier currently because he just hasn't played the games, but I have high hopes for him in Columbus. I think he's going to be a really, really good goaltender going forward. Um, and, yeah, I, 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 he's not there yet, but I got high hopes. Yeah, before he came in, it was like <clears throat> no question Corpus Allo was going to be coming in. He was going to be their next number one goalie. He looked primed to take that, and then here comes Elvis. Mm -hmm. Although it should be noted that a third of his wins are shutouts. Cesar Maniago would be proud. He, he would be. He would be. Yeah, it's four more than Corpus Allo has. That's all I'll say. All right. But yeah. So, so number one is Sergei Bobrovsky. Number two, Mark Denis is eliminated. Now we have Corpus Allo, who is, for me, my favorite one to watch. We have Steve Mason, who was there the longest. We have Merz Lickens, who is the current number one and will 
we're hoping will end up on this list at some point. I think it's early, but Mers looking up at number two. Um, so I think it's between Jonas and Steve, and you mentioned that Corpus Hall has been a, been a been backup, backup the whole time. And Steve Mason Steve. was the undisputed starter for a number of years. Steve Mason, God. Oh, there was a problem. This operation is not supported. That is the message I got when I tried to put Steve Mason up. This operation is not supported. There was a problem. Okay, so our goaltenders for the Columbus Blue Jackets are Sergei Bobrovsky and Steve Mason. Right wing. And speaking of trash, right wing. We have Josh Anderson, Cam Atkinson, Oliver Bjorkstrand, Jared Bowl, Christian Huselius, Patrick Line, Jacob Voracek, David Vaborny, and Nikolai Zherdev. Josh Anderson is the meatiest of the man meat. Like, I, he is what started. Greg Rivet's obsession with man meat. Hmm. He's good. <laughs> but uh, White Deer. Yeah, uh, very, very streaky player, too, as Montreal is finding out. Cam Atkinson, a really good goal scorer at points throughout his career. Uh, 402, a long time in Columbus. I would actually probably put him at Red Deer. Um, I do think he's a really good player. Um, doesn't really have the stats necessarily to be much higher than a red tier, but he was a solid player in Columbus. Yeah, I agree with him in the red tier. Uh, Oliver Bjorkstrand. Uh, just not a, not a lot here to be overly excited about. He's a white tier for me. Jared Bowl. He will kick your ass. It's been a while since we've really seen one of these types. 1,095 penalty minutes, 62 points. <laughs> I mean, we, we like these kind of players, so it's it's hard to – he's probably a white realistically, but we like these types of players, right? So he's a red. He's a red. I, I was borderline blue for Jared Bull. It's a lot of ass whoopings he put out. Christian Husalius. One of my favorite hockey names. He's going to get some bonus points for that. Uh, points per game is pretty decent there, too. I'm going to make him a red tier. I've made this joke before, but it's the age of Husalius. Age of Husalius. Uh, yeah, they're near point per game players. Husalius. <laughs> He's also damn near a point per game player, even though it's a relatively small, 189 games. Yeah, I'm okay with red tier. Patrick Line, the man who came back for Seth Jones in the we don't ever want them trades of Columbus Blue Jackets. No, I'm sorry. No, you're gonna have to get another one. I know there's been Dubois. many. Of them. Sorry, sorry. The, of the Pierre Luc Dubois trade of disgruntled underachieving stars, we'll call them. Uh, Patrick Line is a white tier right now, but you know he does have great potential to be a, an excellent goal scorer in this league. He's proven that at times, but he's a white tier. Jacob Voracek, another one who took off for Philly, and then he came back from Philly. Do you know what they got rid of to get him back from Philly? That Cam Atkinson. Cam Atkinson. Like yeah. it was just it's just weird. It, that was a not weird just the, not this by itself. This by itself you wouldn't notice with all the other shit that they do. It's weird. Columbus is um well there's a reason why Columbus hasn't been very successful in the NHL now, isn't there? Um Jacob Voracek, we're talking about him in Philadelphia. Jacob Voracek is probably really damn close to top tier, if not top tier. Here, he's borderline between bottom tier and middle tier for me. David Vaborny. 
it's not a name that that pops off uh 317 games he was there for a long time so the fact that the name doesn't right re- register with me is kind of kind of funky um so for that reason he might be a white but he does have a decent amount of points so he's probably arguably a red i'd probably go red tier for him and then finally we have nikolai zherdev what happened to zherdev Russia, 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 NHL, Russia, NHL, AHL, Russia, NHL, KHL, NHL, KHL, where he has been ever since. Strange players. I think his stats almost say red, but who are white here for me, though? Okay. Well, we have no blue tier, so no immediates going up. So we have a decision to make because we have five. Red tier players going up for number for four selections. Mm-hmm. Who's the first one that you're taking up? Uh, Cam Atkinson is my number one. Yeah. Um, do you have a number two in mind? Uh, it, for, for me, it's not really. I, I think you can make the case for all of them. I, I think Vortex. As weird as it sounds, might be the weakest of the cases, but we put Vibarne. Um, I do agree that Voracek has the weakest case here for it. So we're looking at Christian Husalius or Jared Bull. Which order? Uh, I would say Hulis, Husalius and Bull. And our right wing selections for the Blue Jackets are Cam Ackeson, David Vaborny, Christian Husalius. And Jared Bull. Positives here? No white tier. No white tier. Much better than the center core. Yeah. Let's finish off the, the front end then and go with the left wing side where we have Nick Felino, Scott Hartnell, Rick Nash, Artemi Panarin, Geoff Sanderson, Jody Shelley, Ray Whitney possibly the best group on the team yeah yeah this is actually a really solid solid group all things considered uh starting with dick felino who was the captain of the columbus blue jackets for quite some time it felt like seemingly forever up until recent up until a couple years ago um I think, what last year or the year before um 599 games played I, if you're talking all time tier, it's hard to put a thick fleet as a blue tier, but for Columbus, he's definitely a high end red at minimum. I agree with the high end red, he's a really good leader for the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see with his two black eyes there that he will continue playing through shit. Yes, uh, real tough, tough guy. Um, real solid player. They most teams are going to be real happy having him on, but we're talking all time, and I don't think he's quite there. Um, Scott Hartnell is the next player up, um, and I'm just glad that this is a strong position because I do not want to see Scott Hartnell on two all-time teams. I can't believe he was on one. He's still going to probably come up for another team yet. But Who was he on before? I don't remember. Nashville. Oh, ooh. Uh, yeah, no, white tier, fuck him. <laughs> uh, uh, Rick Nash, we already know, is blue tier. Our Tenny Panarin, A, he's a blue tier for them, but it's just, I get he didn't want to be there, and that's a big part of it. You know, if he doesn't want to be there, it doesn't matter what contract you give him, but damn, that's one that they should not let get away. Uh, Jeff Sanderson is a solid red tier. Just what a great player player what a great guy you know i met jeff sanderson did you played again sports ah nice i think i think i remember you telling me that story now i think about it yeah he's shopping at played again sports for you skates for his kid he's an nhl player oh yeah you know played again sports our newest sponsor here on the lunch room syndicate uh, Jody Shelley with two women named you damn straight he's gonna punch someone in the face a thousand penalty minutes in 380 games oh my god um 29 points that he did somehow score I mean I mean if that doesn't scream right here I don't know what does um I, I'm disappointed with this 
because he is red tier here. And I don't think he's going to make this team. If I could take Jared Bull or Jody Shelley, I'd take Jody Shelley for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Blue Jacket fans loved Jody Shelley. Loved mm -hmm. it. Um, but he's probably looking behind. Well, not probably. He's looking behind Jeff Sanderson and Nick Foligno. Ray Whitney, another really good player. Um, didn't have a long tenure. Uh, so that's going to keep him away from the blue tier here for me. Uh, go red. Well, in those 150 games, he wore the C at least at least at some point. So gotta give him that. I didn't realize he played for Columbus. So that should also tell you everything you need to know about his tenure in Columbus. A franchise player doesn't always mean the number one. Are we taking our Temi Panarin with the above a point per game average? the only player in franchise history to have a point per game in a, in a season, and he's done it two consecutive seasons. Uh, Set no. the franchise record, and then he broke his own record the next year. Do we take him above Rick Nash? No. No, we don't. No. I, I like the case to be, to be had there. But no. if, he, if he spent more time there, I, I think if he, like, three, four, five more years and – kept that pace or even close to a relatively close. I think he would have a case, but it's fucking Rick Nash. Yeah. How damn Rick Nash. And gave it away earlier. Uh, Jody Shelley's not going to make it. Um, I take Shelley over Ray Whitney. So Ray mm -hmm. Whitney's not going to make it. Now we have Jeff Sanderson or Nick Foligno. Mm -hmm. Who do you like for the number three selection? Uh, for me, it's Nick Foligno here uh, just because of what he meant for many years to Columbus. Our left wing selections for the Blue Jackets are Rick Nash, our Temi Panarin, Nick Felino, Jeff Sanderson. But let's not end on the right side, so let's, let's do the right now. Okay, well, the right side, we are going to be selecting between Mike Commodore, Adam oh, Foote, fuck. Seth Jones, David Savard, James Wisniewski. Are you what the fucking Mike Commodore's hair? Yes. Yes. Well, that hair is why he's going to be on this fucking team, dude. He's got a clown fro. <laughs> it's literally a clown fro. I respect? Question mark? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, he's going red tier. Yeah, red tier by Commodore. Red tier for red hair for a red clown. Uh, Adam Foote, no idea he played for Columbus. None yeah. at all. Really? Yeah. No, no none at all. So, uh, um, a great player in his career. Um, and he's a right, white tier for Columbus. Yeah, I think another one of those guys that they brought in to help legitimize uh, a yeah. franchise early on. Had the captaincy there for a little bit with them. But, yeah, he's a white tier. Yeah. Seth Jones. Seth Jones, who they've got for Ryan Johansson in a franchise prospect for franchise prospect trade, who played extremely well for Columbus. One of the best defensemen in the league while he was there. He's a blue tier. So, of course, what did they do? Trade him. Traded him. Get rid of him. Fuck you. There is a very weird stigma against him that I just don't understand in this. With, with There's a lot of people, fans, that just don't like him. I'm not saying Columbus fans, just me in general. Just You just look at social medias and stuff, which I know you don't do a lot, which I don't blame you. There is a lot of hate towards Seth Jones. and Really? I, I, I don't, yeah, a lot of hate. There's a lot of people who don't like him think he's highly overrated. I don't agree with that assessment at all, but... David Savard, uh, almost 600 games played. Yeah. That's good. I'm fairly confident in saying he's the longest tenured Blue Jacket defenseman. Yeah, probably. That's about all I can really say about him, unfortunately. So if you be eh, – he's a white for me. White here. I mean, if he's red for you, that's fine. I can understand it. So there's only been three players 
to get five, at defense to play 500 games for him. He's at almost 600. I, I, I give some respect for the tenure. Yep. Yeah, fair. Fair. So, uh, Wisniewski, uh, a solid defenseman, deserving of a mention on here, but that's it for me. Wait here. Okay, All so right. we have our number one going up, Seth Jones, and now we have to decide between tenure or clown for Uh, tenure is nice. Uh, 597 games played. Um, I lean towards that over, over clowns. And that leaves us with one spot left. Oh, one, lefty. One spot left, lefty. Left, left. Left, 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 left. I bet the left. Here on the left side, the left defensive side, we have Jan Hayda, Jack by Johnson, Rostislav Kesla, Mark Mathot, Ryan Murray, Chris Russell, Fedora Tutin, and Zach Warenski. Uh, the first name on here is Jan Hayda. Solid defenseman. I liked how he played, uh, but nothing really standing out for an all time white deer. Next up is a Jack Johnson, uh, who we always liked. We've always been relatively big fans of, and you know, we always put him on team. I think he, he's another one of those defensemen that gets a lot of shit. Yeah, I don't. And I know analytically he's a bit, I know, I know he's not an analytical darling, but I think I always thought he was a pretty solid defenseman. Um, you know, to me, he's a red tier on first Yeah, I, know he doesn't, I, I thought he had maybe more points than he did, but you know, I, I thought he thought he was fine. He's he's a real solid defensive defenseman. Um, and again, we always put him. He was on our Johnson and Johnson pairing. Eric Johnson, Jack my Johnson, and Eric my Johnson, Rusty Klesla. The closest to competition Rick Nash would have had for face of the franchise. Huge, huge fan of Kuesla. He is the loot here. Mark Mathot, who here looks maybe like he's picking teeth out. Uh, solid defense with defenseman as well. Uh, just not a lot to say beyond that. So for me, he's a white. Um, Ryan Murray, one of those guys who you know, was a top prospect that just never panned out. And I don't know how he stayed on Columbus. Shouldn't it, they have traded him? Mm -hmm. Or like another prospect that wasn't going to pan out by now? Like, I mean, it's it's a formula, guys. He was a second overall pick, by the way. I thought, I thought he was top yeah. two, but He was trained for a fifth round pick. Ugh. Well, I think Columbus got their... Got value out of that number two overall, huh? Uh, next up, Chris Russell, 208 games played. He's nothing special here with me. For me, he's a white tier. Fetter Tudin, the one that I forgot about with over 500 games, 553 games. Solid offensive contribution, solid defensively. I'd go red tier for Fetter Tudin. I would agree. I, I, I like Tudin when he played there and then. Uh, last up on the left defenseman side, uh, Zach Warnski. For me, he's a blue tee. He's a fucking great – I think he's a great defenseman. Um, it's probably getting too good, though. I'm sure he's going to be traded soon. You have an argument uh, for Warnski over Klesla for first? I think Warnski is a better player. But like you said, in terms of what you think of Columbus, I think Klesla should be number one. Jack Mike Johnson or Fetter Tudin? For me, it's Jack Johnson. But okay. I, I think you can make a case for two, for two. I am a bigger fan of Jack Johnson's game myself. And on the left D side, we have two blue tier players. We do. We do. Rusty Klesla, Zach Wierenski, and Jack Mike Johnson. Our lineup for the Columbus Blue Jackets at defense, our first pairing, Rusty Klesla, Seth Jones. We have Zach Wierenski, David Savard, Jack Johnson, and Mike Commodore. Back in net, Sergei Bobrovsky and Steve Mason. Who do we have up front? 
In the fourth spot on the first line, we have Rick Nash, Cam Ackerson, and centered by Sergey Fedorov. Second line, Artani Panarin, Brian O'Hanson at center, and David Vavorny on the right side. Third line, Nick Foligno, Brandon, Brandon Dubinsky, and the age of Husalius himself, Christian Husalius. We have a J-Off, Sanderson, Boone Jenner, and I'm going to kill you, Jared Bull, on the fourth line. This is uh, this is bad. Yeah. For all time standards. And it's what we expected. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Not it's a big all time standards. If you put this all time team out on the ice competing, I, I still think they're like a bubble team against regular NHL teams. They're all time team. I think, I, I, I don't think is necessarily like a division winner in today's NHL. I think you have enough here where I think they would be closer to a top end team. Because you have prime Rick Nash, prime at Timmy Panarin, which helps. Um, you're, I'm bigger on Borowski than you are. Um, Seth Jones, I, I think it would be a good team. I, I think I, I give them a little bit more credit than Bubble, but the fact that we're even having a discussion saying that like they're nowhere near the top of a current NFL standing is all you need to say. It's not even about bubble team. It's, oh, I'm not even sure if they're the best team in the league. If this was a team in the league, mm-hmm. it is telling. No, I mean, this is this is a bad franchise. It is what it is, and it sucks because I'd like to see this team good just to have a team around here that's good in professional sports. Cleveland. Detroit. They have the Cavs. They are better I- this year. They've been well, not just this year, but you know, in, in the past. Yeah, I mean, they had LeBron well, for they, years, but the last four years, championships. One, yeah, which I guess is something. And I mean, I know Detroit had some good teams in, in the Red Wings and Tigers, but yeah, but that that's in a different state. Yeah, but, I mean, Ohio Ohio different. professional sports has not exactly been good. <laughs> It's like in the last like forty years, it's been pretty goddamn bad. You you had you had a few years with the Cleveland Indians in the nineties and and twenty tens. They had they they went to the World Series in twenty sixteen as well. All right, and that will do it for this edition of the Lunchroom Syndicate's All Time Team featuring the Columbus Blue Jackets. Mm-hmm. Ugh, it was bad. I hope it was rough for you, like it was for us. Uh, I have been Christopher. That, I believe, has been Jay. Most of the time. Most of the time. But uh, thank you for joining us. Until next time. Deuces. Deuces. Hi, doing, everybody? Have you ever just been sitting back watching the Lunchroom Syndicate here on Twitch or maybe YouTube? And was like, you know what? I need a nice, cold, refreshing drink. What will be my drink of choice? Well... Christopher here with Lunchroom Syndicate says, drink a Gatorade. Electrolytes to help you keep feeling fresh all day long. Is it a deodorant? Is it a ball powder? What's... (laughs)